Hey everybody, it's one of those days where you keep trying to film and there's a million interruptions. So we'll see if I get through this. I don't know, it's been a lot. I've tried a lot of times, we'll see. So today for Nonfiction November, I wanted to talk to you a little bit about the books that affected how I homeschool. So that said, it's not a very long list and if you're not a homeschooler, that's fine because there are several that would be great just for parents as well as other traditional educators. Um, and there are even a few that I think would be really cool if you're trying to learn about something for yourself. So that said, if you're not a homeschooler, this list is still pretty great. First up is The Well-Trained Mind, A Guide to Classical Education by Susan Wise Bauer. And this one's kind of everybody's heard of it if they're a homeschooler, or at least most people have. But the thing that I really liked about this is it talks about how you don't have to teach everything all in one go but how we should build on, on the different stages. Uh, kids are all sponges when they're little, and so if you expose them to lots of different things, later on they can recall it if you kind of bring up the connection. It's like a spider web. So the more touch points to the spider web, the uh, better ingrained it is. Uh, I really liked the idea. Also, that book kind of helped my husband get on board with the idea of homeschool, so for that I'm grateful. The second book is called The Global Achievement Gap, by Tony Wagner. And in this book, uh, this was really actually, I think both my, a lot of our parents are actual traditional educators and they also read this book and liked it. So I think it'd be good for pretty much anybody, even in the workforce. So Tony Wagner goes around to different CEOs and asks them uh, for these global companies, what traits are you looking for in new hires? What do you feel is lacking? And the things that they talked about were cooperation uh, or collaboration, either one, creativity and communication. And Tony brings up the point that a lot of times people in traditional schools are encouraged to do all of their work alone. Uh, there's more emphasis on competition between each other as opposed to trying to collaborate. Um, so he kind of talks a little bit about that, um, just you trying to answer questions. You don't use as many much creativity or communication. You're looking for one specific answer. And I liked that he gave practical ideas for teachers to try and incorporate those skill buildings into their teaching. Um, so it was a very interesting read, I think, for anybody. I really enjoyed it. The next one is called Deconstructing Penguins. Uh, by Lawrence Goldstone. And in this book, I really liked it. It's really tiny, but it packs a big punch. And the thing I liked about it was it talks about literary criticism in a parent-child book club, which you think would be like the most dry thing ever. But I laughed so many times reading this book. He talks about, um, yeah, just how he went about setting up this book club, uh, what books they talked about, what questions came up and how to make this happen for you in your own community or with your own child. Uh, he made me feel like I could I could do that pretty, pretty well because uh, it's very good about giving you the skills you need, um, but you also laugh a lot as you learn. And I appreciate that anytime in a nonfiction book where you feel like uh, learning is not a chore and it's, it's all about the process. So definitely Deconstructing Penguins is great if you are anybody who likes books. So if you're on booktube, yeah, that's, that's you right there. Cause I learned a lot, even just about my own reading from that book. So, uh, yeah, good one. Very highly recommend. The next one is Leonard Sachs's boys adrift. Now I have two boys and one girl. She came around a little bit later and I know he's actually done one on girls, but I don't remember which girls on the edge. Maybe I'm not quite sure if that's correct, but anyway, Leonard Sachs, I know that there's lots of differences between gender and sexuality and all, all those things. I'm not going to get into that right now. However, in Leonard Sachs's book, he talks about some of the wiring differences in the male anatomy uh, and the brain there. And so, uh, and also just some of the challenges that that creates because of the environment we have, um, whether it's uh, different hormone changes in our environment or um, just the, the expectation uh, of our traditional education, having them sit still. But he also gives, again, some practical ideas for um, schools and parents to improve upon those things for uh, for boys to advance easier. And I, I liked that. Like, there's this one school he talks about where they actually, it's all boys school, and they do school in the treetops, and the kids climb trees while they're learning. And I loved, I thought that was very neat, and it made me kind of reevaluate how I teach my boys. Um I still could get a lot better. <laughs> I am by no means a, a perfect homeschooling parent, but I appreciated the inspiration that was in there as well as the science to back it up. 
The next book kind of falls along the same lines, and it's Last Child in the Woods by Richard Louvre. This got a lot of push last year, at least on NPR, because he also released a book called Vitamin N. Both of these books are great on, it's called Nature Def... Nature Deficiency Disorder or Nature Deficit Disorder. I don't remember which one. But the idea is we as a society have moved indoors and it's affecting not only our bodies and our fitness but also our brains. And he has a lot of science to back up um, what how the changes are happening and what they are, are doing to us. But also um, some great ideas for incorporating it better into our own lives as well as our children's and our family's lives. And yeah, I just really appreciate this book. I've read it a few times now, um, and I think it's great for anybody. And I know as a bookworm, like I, I like it on the couch or in the bathtub with my book. Uh, being outside is not always my favorite thing, but I, you can take a book outside. It's pretty out there. <laughs> There's no such thing as the wrong weather, just the wrong clothing. Um, although I guess as long as you can have gloves to hold your book with, you're good. So I really liked that book. It was very practical and also a good read. The last one I wanted to talk to you about was called Playful Learning by Mariah Bruel. And this book is also, I think, good for any traditional educator as well. Um, but even parents. It talks about lots of different ways to incorporate um, the arts, the writing, science into your home life uh, as well as your classroom life to make it more engaging and interactive. Kids do not learn from books as uh, as at least not textbooks, as well as they're going to learn from exposing themselves um, to different experiences. Um, even if you're reading a book and then doing a little craft or having, I, a lot of times I have my boys draw what they hear uh, or read about just because um, that's how they learn better. So this was a really inspiring book. There's lots of color pictures in it and it's a pretty quick read uh, as well. This last one I wanted to show you, I haven't actually read it yet, but it's on my list. Benedict Carey's How We Learn, The Surprising Truth About When, Where, and Why It Happens. And I think, again, this would be good for anybody who wants to learn more about brain science. So that's my list of great books on um, that, that have affected how I educate. And yeah, what are the books that have really affected you if you homeschool? I would really love to hear that, uh, as well as if you're uh, a regular teacher. So, Yeah. As we continue on with Nonfiction November, I'm really enjoying the books that I'm reading. I will probably do two wrap-ups because there's a long list and I don't want to be too long and dry. So there you go. Talk to you guys later. Bye.